What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? Good evening. I'm a useful idiot, but you are a mere idiot. So listen up. Our top stories to indoctrinate you with tonight are Biden's war of terror on Americans is escalating to very protective proportions. We'll show you how elections are always legit, unless we say they're not. Starving to death is looking more and more wonderful. Will Fauci turn his emails over to the court? There was a beheading in California, naturally. And non-compliant athletes are a problem. All this and more. But first, this week, we observe the 20th anniversary of 9-11 the deadliest terrorist attack in American history. This 20th anniversary is a time when Americans grieved the tragic losses surrounding 9-11, while government agencies celebrated the new powers it gave them to invade the privacy of citizens. But rumor has it, the Biden administration is now viewing their political rivals as a bigger threat to America than the events of 9-11. Let's throw it over to Tucker Carlson with more. If you want to know what the Biden administration is really thinking, listen to the guy with the comb over in the anchor chair at NBC. Here is his exchange with Kamala Harris, the sitting vice president, yesterday. Not quite 20 years after 9-11, the Capitol came under attack from domestic terrorists. I began by asking the vice president about how, over two decades, our focus has had to shift from foreign terror to the threat from within. I think it is very dangerous, and I think it is very harmful, and it makes us weaker. So you look at everything from the fact there are 11 people right now running for Secretary of State, the keepers of the integrity of the voting system of their state, who are election deniers. You heard it right here from our beloved Vice President Kamala Harris. Those who question the results of the 2020 election and seek election justice are indeed domestic terrorists who threatened to destroy our democracy. Well, aside from those circumstances of our fine leftist leaders apparently committing acts of domestic terrorism, you may not question the results of any election under any circumstances, ever. How can you win with Russian interference, though? That's, That's a real thing. That's what I'm scared about no, in 2020. But, but rightly. Because right. I think he's an illegitimate president that didn't really win, so how do you you know, fight against that in 2020. You are absolutely right. And you can have the election stolen from you. He is an illegitimate president in my mind. Would you be my vice presidential candidate? <laughs> but... Folks, look, I absolutely agree. I agree with tens of millions of Americans who are wo very worried that when they cast the ballot on an electronic voting machine, that there is no paper trail to record that vote. And despite the final tally and the inauguration and the situation we find ourselves in, I do have one very affirmative statement to make. We won. Without voter suppression, Stacey Abrams would be the governor of Georgia. Andrew Gillum is the governor of Florida. If Al Gore won that election, I think he won it anyway. The one thing that Trump is fearful of uh, when it comes to his being president is that finally we will see how illegitimate his victory actually was. And in honor of 9-11, the Biden administration celebrated by raiding the homes of up to 50 Trump supporters. Because of 9-11, we must be willing to do whatever it takes to protect America from American citizens who are at least as dangerous as the 9-11 attackers, if not more. Right, Joe? Too much of what's happening in our country today is not normal. Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans represent an extremism that threatens the very foundations of our republic. Indeed. And of those 50 citizens the federal government has intimidated with persecution, it turns out 100% of them support the current regime's political opposition. Now, we know that looks bad, but if you just listen to our talking points and pay attention to the sincerity that we act like we have when we convey them, then you won't be suspicious of anything. Unless you want to be investigated too, you'll gladly see how Biden weaponizing the Department of Justice and the FBI against his political rivals is not a fascist or communistic tactic. Intimidating and silencing those with dissenting political views is just part of how you uphold a democracy under the precedent, it's the new normal. 
To help clarify, fascist and communist dictators during a power grab may silence their opposition, but they also cause famines as another way of controlling the population. Just like Stalin did in the Soviet Union or Mao in China. And that's clearly not what we're doing here. And in other news, an updated count of US-based food processing plants that have been destroyed since Biden took office brings the grand total now up to 103. Stay tuned for updated numbers, because we're not done with that yet. Alternatively, some citizens are now taking their dependency on food out of the hands of those who control the food supply and putting it into their own hands by starting their own gardens. And surprisingly, the US government now wants you to register your garden with them, which you can obediently do at the USDA.gov website. And for those who are worried about both the food supply and what the current government has done to it and any further plans it may have for it, it makes sense that you would want to register your garden with the government. That way they can know about it. Anything else will probably have you starting to look like a domestic terrorist pretty soon. Starvation's cool. Moving on. A court has given Lord Anthony Fauci 21 days to turn over censorship emails between him and social media giants. This has to do with an investigation surrounding how the federal government colluded with big tech, instructing them on what to censor so that pandemic narratives, all of which have been proven to be true, could have the correct amount of monopolization in your mind. Now, aside from being science, Anthony Fauci is clearly someone who wants truth and justice to be served. So much so that he's expected to ask Hillary to personally deliver his emails to the courts. In Arizona, after winning the GOP nomination for governor, Republican Carrie Lake's opponent, Katie Hobbs, is refusing to take part in the gubernatorial debate. As Carrie Lake is known for being strong, principled, well-spoken, and quick on her feet, Hobbs even petitioned the Arizona Election Commission to abandon the debate in favor of a town hall style meeting where she won't have to face or directly talk to Carrie Lake. The Election Commission shut down her request, saying the debate will go on with or without her. So it appears as though Carrie Lake's opponent will be the first candidate in Arizona history to have enough courage to be scared enough to not be willing to take part in the debate in the race for governor. Hobbs is such an advocate for America and the US Constitution that she's abandoning her First Amendment right to free speech. And that's the type of courage the youth of Arizona can look up to. This just in! Biden got lost while trying to exit the stage again. A frightening time for all Americans. But luckily, as you can see, the president was eventually found by caregivers. And from there, it only took another 28 seconds for the man responsible for upholding democracy to comprehend which way he's supposed to exit the stage from. Now, as someone who's on stages regularly, I just wish I could get a message to the president that nearly 100% of the time, you exit the stage on the same side that you entered it from. All you have to do is remember which side you entered it from. And if he could do that, he won't have this problem that he keeps having. Moving on. Now in the wake of Queen Elizabeth's passing, President Biden remembered to offer his sincerest heartfelt condolences for the Queen in a message that he wrote in the condolence book that he copied off a note card that he held in his other hand. And in green California, as the state suffers from blackouts due to its weak energy infrastructure, Gavin Newsom continues to feverishly plea for people to move back from Florida to his Soros-inspired weak on crime state. Strong on having no energy, heavy on mandate state, because California offers true freedom. California. No other state gives you the freedom to be at risk of being decapitated in broad daylight as you're walking home. And finally, tennis great Novak Djokovic was once again banned from playing in a major tournament, the US Open, because of his unwillingness to comply with health mandates. Though there's been a lot of scrutiny against this decision, we can assure you it's an important policy based exclusively on protecting players and their health. There are no conflicts of interest. Remember, we're all still in this together, and you need to do your part so we can get back to going forward with a new normal. That's it for today's news. 
If you didn't believe what we said, then you are clearly a threat to this regime and you should get ready to be harassed by federal agencies and potentially imprisoned. And if you did believe what we said, then things are actually going to turn out much worse for you. Good night! Be happy.